And while playing ball, as a left-handed pitcher, a line drive came back and hit me between the eyes. And eventually I lost my sight completely. The image of a blind person to me was only one image. And that was someone standing on a corner with a cup and a cane. And I said, I do not want to do that. I want to be successful. I wanted to do something in baseball. And Ed Lucas uh, could not have been more successful, could not be more successful. He has done such amazing things, and I am so happy to have the man that I've known for about 30 years or more in studio, Ed Lucas and Christopher Lucas, his son. Ed, an Emmy Award-winning broadcaster with 60 years of professional sports coverage. His sports column is As I See It. He's also the co-author of a great new book, which is out today, and you can get it in I urge you to do so. Seeing Home, the Ed Lucas story uh, with his son, Christopher Lucas, co-author. Uh, they're both here. Gentlemen, uh, welcome to both of you. Um, I remember you uh, from the Art Rush Jr. days. Uh, yeah, I don't know how old you were when your dad brought you up to that show. We were all a lot younger then. But your dad looks the same. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, how he does Ed, Ed, God bless you. Thanks for coming up. Congratulations on the book. Thank you very much, Steve. A pleasure being with you. At, I mean, this is this is so this is such an amazing story. I mean, it, it, it's a baseball story, but it's your story. I mean, it transcends baseball. Anybody would want to read this book as a as an inspiration or just as a fascination. Um, talk about t t talk about getting hit with that baseball and then losing your sight. At what exact age did you did you lose all sight? Age twelve, the day Bobby Thompson hit the home run, uh, I was watching it on TV with my father, and then I went out to play ball with my friends, and I was a left-handed pitcher. Took my glasses off because I always felt that I could see better without them, and I threw a pitch, the left-handed pitcher, and the line drive came back. Boom. Hit me between the eyes. And that was the last thing I ever saw. And how does a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old and an 18-year-old and a 20-year-old and a 30-year-old, how do you persevere? How do you, how do you start and how do you keep going? Well, I thought it was the end of the world. What can a blind person do? <laughs> My only image was someone standing on the corner with a tin cup and a cane begging. Right. And I vowed I would never, never do that. With my parents, support, faith, my friends, and the love of baseball. Uh, I say baseball took my sight but gave me a life. And my mother read in the paper that Phil Rizzuto was going to be in the American shops in Newark as a greeter for a clothing store. So my parents took me there and uh, my mother spoke to Scooter on the side. He came over. And my father said, Ed, this is the Scooter, Phil Rizzuto. And I didn't know that we were going to see him, and they were going to buy me some uh, clothes for school. What was that clothing store he, he fronted the, for? The American, American shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, as a result, um, he started to talk to me. I asked him some baseball questions. He said, hey, listen, kid, why don't I give you my phone number? He said, nah, give me a call any time. If you still want to talk baseball, if you want to, uh, you know, just lift up your spirits and talk to me, give me a call any time. He said, I guess you have an unlisted number, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you won't give me yours. <laughs> and, of course, I gave him my number, and we were friends for 56 years. And, and, I mean, and Scooter was just an amazing man. Anybody, I grew up listening to him that had the pleasure of, of meeting him and sitting down and eating dinner with you and him and Bob Shepard at, at Yankee Stadium uh, when I would you know cover the Yankees right. in the press room, which was like, I was a kid and I was a, uh, it was a dream come true. I want to bring you into this um, a, a, as well, um, uh, Christopher. Uh, when we come back, and I, I just want to you know talk about what it was what it's like being the son of Ed Lucas and Ed. I want you to, to also talk about um, how you got into. The baseball aspect of it, uh, the, the, the broadcasting and, and the journalistic part of it, and what you've done, your accomplishments over the years, which, by the way, are all documented in the book, The Ed Lucas Story, uh, ladies and gentlemen. What's the, what's the favorite interview, the best interview you ever did, the, the, what, your favorite interview? I know it's tough to pick. Well, I guess Willie Mays, because that was in the very beginning, and I figured he's an icon. He was a young kid, but still I met him the last day of the season, 1957, and he sat on the bench talking to me, 
and didn't move, and a guy from the Associated Press was walking up and down the dugout. All right, so we'll hold it right there. We'll come back. We'll come back with Ed Lucas and Christopher Lucas. More on the Steve Malzberg Show. All right, folks, we're back with uh, Ed Lucas and Christopher Lucas and the book Seeing Home, the Ed Lucas story. Ed, you were talking about Willie Mazon. In, in the book, there's so many pictures of you and so many great uh, dignitaries. In fact, on the back of the book, there's a picture of you sitting in the dugout with Willie Mays, the interview you were alluding to earlier. Um, you and Joe DiMaggio. Uh, I saw a picture earlier of you and Roger Maris, you and Phil Rizzuto, you and President Clinton, you and Larry King. Um, uh, let, me, let me go to your son, Christopher. Uh, I mean, wh wh what's it like? I mean, th there's got to be drawbacks and, and hard, you know, hardships of sorts growing up with a father who's, who's visually impaired. Sure. But, but I guess he's such a special man and, and, and opening such special doors, not only for himself, but for you as well. Right. Well, it, you know, it's, it's sort of God took something away, but he gave us an incredible blessing with it as well. Because not only for him to have perseverance, but it gave my brother and I a chance to see you know, someone getting through any obstacle, anything. And that, you know, you mentioned in your opening about the book is more than just baseball. It's an inspiration. It's, it's so an, inspiration. an inspiration. And I, to you I, as I well. got to watch it firsthand, yeah, Greg. So yeah. there's nothing that can happen in my life where I go, oh, I can't get over that. I, can't. I say to myself, look at your father. Look at all he's done. And hopefully others will do the same. And you're, you, you're uh, an actor. I am. Yes, I'm a performer. It was, you, know, you mentioned all the people on the back cover there. I, I say all the time that going to Yankee Stadium and sitting at Mr. Rizzuto's table was like the couch on the Tonight Show. Yeah. <laughs> because you never know who was going right, to be there from right. every area of entertainment and sports and Very politics. So it's, it's been a blessed life. And, 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 and Ed, talk about how you, you got into, uh, what, was your, what was your first interview? How did you get into the first uh, a situation, uh, your first broadcast job or print job? Well, I was at uh, uh, sorry, WSRU at Seton Hall University, and I was doing radio shows for them. But uh, Phil Zuda was my first interview, and then Mays was my real big interview, I guess. And you know, I wanted to talk to Willie. He figured I would never get to see him again, and we became longtime friends. Yeah, well, it's it's hard not to become a longtime <laughs> friend of uh, of Ed Lucas. Uh, l let me ask you about baseball today. Um, uh, the game has changed. You know, now they talk about the clocks. You know, the limits on the pitcher uh, and taking time in the batter stepping out. And we're also hearing now maybe they'll end, they'll outlaw the shift because there's not enough offense. I say leave the game alone. Alone, amen. <laughs> I agree with you. Leave it alone. Leave it the way it, it's been. Uh, I'm not in favor of the designated hitter. That's something that they had since 1973 with uh, Ron Bloomberg as the first designated yep. hitter. But yep. still, you know, uh, leave the game the way it is with the pitchers and you know the batters and the shift. The, they had to, they had the Ted Williams shift. They didn't complain then. Right. And and you would think. Yeah, and it's isn't it amazing that the National League never picked up the designated hitters in, in all those years. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they keep their, their u uniqueness, if you will. What do you make of, uh, you know, uh, Brian Price, the manager of the Reds, uh, 77 times he dropped the F-bomb in a, in a five-minute tirade that we played a little bit with the Beefs uh, earlier in the show. Uh, you know, it reminds me, people think that, oh, this is outrageous. It, I mean, you go back to the Goose Gossage, uh, Gossage oh. Tirade. <laughs> Lee Elia, Frank Robinson. Tommy uh, Lasorda. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy yeah, Lasorda, yeah, right on down the line. I mean, yeah. Billy Martin with Billy Henry Hecht. I'll throw you right. in the blank and whirlpool. <laughs> I, I, mean, well, I was standing out. there that day when it happened. Were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, I mean, this is nothing new. No. This is part of baseball, right? Exactly, absolutely. Now, are you excited about uh, the Mets? Because uh, I oh, know yes. you're a Yankee fan, but, I mean, the Mets seem to, you know, nine wins in a row, and, and plus their pitching is, is pretty darn good. Uh huh. It's going back to the uh, Tom Seaver days and Kuzman and Matlack. Yeah, Gentry you know? and all those, all those But uh, no, I'm I'm happy for the Mets. I cover the Mets as well, and I, I think that uh, you know it's good for baseball. And Derek Jeter, no Derek Jeter. It feels funny looking at the Yankees without Jeter out there. Yes. Right? <laughs> he found a new career, though. Yes, he did. And, and this is Jeter Publishing, yes, by the way. We're, we're right. very lucky with Which that. takes us full circle all the way back. <laughs> Listen, uh, the book Seeing Home, the Ed Lucas story, folks. Again, uh, Father's Day is coming up. This is written by Ed and his son. There's a, there's a, a tie in there. Uh, it, it, if you want to be inspired, if you want to read just a great, 
story, a true story about a wonderful human being. What you see here is what you get. I've known him for 30 years. Uh, get the book, Seeing Home. Ed, God bless you, sir. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you, Thanks for having thank us on. Thank you very much. Folks, we're coming mm -hmm. back uh, with the Steve Malsberg Show, uh, so don't you go away.